So if you're watching this, you're probably about to go into architecture school or design school. And as you may have heard, or as you may have seen in the Instagram memes, there's a lot of connotations attached to going to design school. So most of the common ones are the sleepless nights, the not having a life, people dropping out of school around you like flies, the super tight deadlines and the overall difficulty of just going to architectural school. So I'm gonna tell you how I was able to get around a lot of that stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say it was easy or it was a piece of cake, but I'm just gonna share with you some of the things that I was able to do to survive it. And also some of the things to expect. So full disclaimer here, this is for architectural students, but it's also for anyone in design school. So landscape architecture, urban planning, urban design, we all really struggled similarly in school. So this is for all of y'all. So I'm Nate Robert Aze. I'm a designer and entrepreneur based in the US. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top five tips in surviving architectural school. So let's talk about how the beard is coming in in full effect, man. It's just, I'm geeked out right now because I was looking like a naked mole, a naked mole rat for the past few weeks after I cut my beard and it was a silent struggle. So now y'all get to see it coming back a little bit. So it brings me to remember a picture of me when I was in college. I cringed so hard when I saw this, but hey, it was the life I lived at the time. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. Let me tell you a little bit about my background. I started designing as a kid when I was a child. I was eight years old. I was drawing houses. I was drawing stuff like that. Fast forward to high school, I decided to keep taking the path a bit. I actually discovered a software called SketchUp that allowed me to kind of build these houses out in models. And it's gonna be a program that you guys use a lot in your professional studies. I actually studied at Ball State University. It's located in Muncie, Indiana. So it's actually ranked number five in College Factual's best schools for architecture list. And it's ranked number one in Indiana. So it's a really good school. There was about 22,000 students there. And I actually enjoyed my overall experience. So as a lot of us do, I actually went to school for architecture, but I ended up switching my major when I got into architecture school. At Ball State University, just like a lot of other schools in the US, you start off with the first year doing pretty much all three to where you study architecture, urban planning and landscape architecture but then you kind of have to pick one as you move forward to your second year so in this video i'm going to be talking more so about that first year and getting through that right because the next year i ended up switching to urban planning graduated in three and a half years which i'll tell you how i did that i actually took an independent study in revit so i can learn more architecture and i went on to get my master's in urban design after that i worked at two architectural firms and then i went out on my own to start Render Vision, which is my architectural visualization company that I do now. I've had the opportunity to work on some amazing projects. Another part of that is I'm still going along my path because I'm still young in my career, but I'm really hopeful about what is to come in this field because it's honestly an amazing field to be in. So why am I trying to tell you these tips? First of all, I want you all to manage your expectations. You're gonna see and hear a lot of things going into architectural school and some of the things may really scare you. Some of the things you may be like, yeah, I'm ready for. And then you get to school and you're like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> but it's always good to kind of be prepared for the storm. At least know kind of what you're getting yourself into. Because honestly, I did not. So let's get into the juicy part. So first of all, you want to learn time management. I know it sounds cliche. A lot of people say that, but it's super important when you're going into architectural school. One of the big things that can really mess you up is procrastination. Procrastination is a huge problem in architectural school because the volume of work and the timeline that we have to do it in. And projects are pretty much due every week, but you wanna build great habits when it comes to your time management. For me, what I would do when we would get a new project in school is I would start working on it that day and see if I can actually come up with the first three or four concepts that day so that I gave myself enough time to show my professor or instructor those concepts, get some critique early so I can move on to how I'm gonna present the project. Another way you can manage your time well is by leveraging technology. Right now I use an app called Notion. When I was back in school, we had Todoist and other to-do softwares, but it would be tough because some of the time it wouldn't integrate well with other softwares and other things like that. But now there are softwares out there that really, really can make your life much easier in terms of organizing and managing time. There's an app called Notion that some of you may have heard about. 
And I use it now for business, for life, for all of those things. And I think it would be amazing for school. It has templates that you can go in and customize and you can basically mold it to exactly what you want it to be. So check out the link below in the description and get Notion. So number two, you wanna build a relationship with your instructors as much as you can. Now, there are gonna be the instructors that you really just are not cool with. You're just not too fond of. And obviously you don't wanna hate anyone or you know have a bad rapport with any of your instructors. That's just a bad idea. But there are gonna be the ones that you favor and there are gonna be the ones that favor you. And that's gonna turn into real favor in terms of you getting through school. A lot of people ask how. How do you build connections with people that are older than you, people that have more experience than you. Honestly, I think it's quite simple. Just be interested in them as much as they're interested in you. They have a journey. They have a life. They have things they care about. If you ask them about those things and you're genuinely interested in how they got there and where they're going, they're going to favor you. And they're going to tell you stuff that they may not have told anyone else. It happened to me while I was, I know they call it favoritism, but it's not necessarily favoritism because you're taking the step to do the extra thing that a lot of people will not do. You gotta understand that your professors are people too. You wanna ask them questions. You wanna help them inside the class and outside of class. And that stuff goes a long way. I actually did it while I was in school. I'll tell you a small story. When I was in my third year, I got pretty close to the Dean. And I did exactly what I was telling you because I was genuinely interested about how he got where he is and his process and his well-being as a person. And so he was the one who actually helped me and told me how I could actually graduate early. He was the one who told me how I could take an independent study and study Revit while I was in school so I would be more prepared for the marketplace. And then eventually he was able to meet my family and we still have a connection now. That's what I mean when I say build connection with instructors because it really, really goes a long way. Number three, you want to run your own race. You really don't want to compare yourself with others. In architecture and design, there's a lot of comparison. There's a lot of opinion and you really don't want to get too caught up in that, especially early on because it might knock you out of the game early and it's tough to bounce back at that point. When I went to school, immediately when I walked into the doors of the College of Architecture and Planning at Ball State, I saw all of these projects and these things on the walls and these beautiful renderings and these briefs and narratives and all of these models and all of those things like that. And I was immediately intimidated because I thought to myself, how do I get from where I am right now mentally to be able to bring myself to do this type of work. It was the most intimidating thing ever. But I'll tell you right now, slowly but surely, you're gonna learn the skills that's gonna make you able to do those projects and even better in most cases. So just run your own race. As you're in design school, you're gonna be learning yourself as a designer, the things that you like, the things that you hate, and all those things, while you're learning how to be an adult at the same time. Embrace that time. It's an amazing time for you to blossom as a person and become the person who you truly are. Number four, be mentally and emotionally ready for criticism. Because honestly, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's quite a bit of criticism. Let me have some coffee real quick because we're about to get into the weeds. So whenever you present your work, there are going to be instructors and other students who are older than you who come in and say, hey, you know, I like your work because of this. I didn't like this part. I hated this part. You need to start over. They're gonna draw all over your work. They're gonna break your the model that you create that you use the whole night and stayed the whole night up to create. It's gonna get brutal at times, but you have to be mentally ready for that. You have to be able to not take any of that stuff personal because it's not personal. And you have to find ways to detach yourself away from your work. And it's not just like that in school, it's just like that in the real world. So it's better to build that habit now. Like I said, architecture and design is very subjective and it's very opinionated. If someone has a style, they're going to stick to that style because they like that style. If your style isn't the same, it's not that it's bad, it's just that they didn't like it. So just understand that. Use criticism to your advantage. Use it to actually build your skills and use it to become a better designer. So number five, yes, you're gonna have a busy schedule. Yes, you're gonna have sleepless nights. Yes, you're gonna have tight deadlines, but make sure to take care of you at the end of the day. 
But don't beat yourself up sometimes when you get very encompassed in your work and you're not able to step away and do something for yourself. Because it happens to all of us and it even happens to me right now. I'm still trying to learn that whole balance thing. But it is something you have to keep in mind and I wish someone would have told me that while I was in school so I can start building those habits back then. So eating healthy food, getting seven or eight hours of sleep at night, taking vitamins, exercising. I remember when I was in school, I used to go play basketball right after studio at most times. And it was something I really, really enjoyed. So it didn't necessarily feel like I was doing vigorous exercises. Another thing that I did to get more sleep was I would leave studio, let's say on a Friday night, I would leave studio at a reasonable time when we had a project due on Monday. And then I would actually come in on Saturday morning and Sunday morning to work on the project. That's something that really nobody else was doing. I was usually in there by myself, but it helped me to balance my time out more and have time later in the day on Saturday and on Sunday to do things for me. This stuff is super vital, so make sure you take notes. So bonus tip, I know y'all thought I was done. Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? And then I still don't know the hell of the song. <laughs> anyway, so you wanna find out what you offer to the studio, and I'll explain what I mean. So you're gonna have a studio with many different people, many different backgrounds, many different skill sets that all come together and work on projects. And sometimes you work on projects together as a group. You want to have that thing that you bring to the table that people know that they can come to you for. Honestly, it's probably gonna come from something you liked before you got to school. And it's probably going to inform what you end up doing in your career after school. For me, it was graphic presentation. So anything that had to do with renderings, graphics, I was the Photoshop king at the time. I mean, you can ask anyone. Whenever it was time to work in Photoshop, everyone would come to me to learn the hotkeys and all those things because I really liked it. So I was the person who contributed to the studio and the team with my skill set. And after school, I ended up getting into the business that I am now, which is Render Vision, which is the stuff I was doing while I was at school. So it's super important because it's gonna help you all get through school together. There's gonna be the technical people, there's gonna be the people who are great at math and great at you know numbers and great at spoken communication and things like that. And you all are gonna help each other strengthen your skills in all of those individual things. It's actually a really beautiful thing if done right. So what are your thoughts and takeaways on this video? I really wanna talk to you guys. I wanna hear about some of the things that you are going through in school, some of the things that you've gone through in school, some of the things that you're expecting and other things like that. So leave a comment below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content like this. Once again, I'm Nate Ramadeze. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.